class, we've been learning all kinds of ways to bring depth to our pictures, ways to create space inside of our paper. We have learned about making things big at the bottom of our page to make them look close up and moving them further back or up the page while making them look smaller to suggest they are far away. we have to make our drawings look more realistic. Today, I'm going to give you another tool for your toolbox. I like to call this triangle perspective. You are probably wondering why I was holding a triangle, right? Together, along with our horizon line, you know, that place where land and sky meets, we're going to use this triangle to create a realistic landscape that will give so much depth to your pictures, you'll wonder if you can't climb right into your drawing and walk off into the sunset. Let's begin with a piece of paper. Hello class. Today is the day that we're going to do our triangle perspective. So, I say triangle, so it's going to be a landscape picture. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to orient my paper landscape style. So you'll notice that, you know, the paper is longer. A lot of people refer to this as hot dog style because it's long like a hot dog. And of course, you know, people know it's opposite as hamburger style, uh, which is also called portrait. So I'm not going to refer to them as hot dog and hamburger. Uh, you know, and again, the hamburger would be stacked nice and high. I'm going to call this portrait and landscape. So here we go. There's the landscape. And the first thing that we're going to do with our landscape is we're going to add a horizon line. A horizon line is the place where sky and land meets. And it's just a single, simple line. So normally I would use a pencil. I encourage you guys to use a pencil. And again, we use pencil because pencils are for practice, and if you make a mistake, you can undo it. You can always go over it in something more permanent, like marker and crayon later, or even better, paint. I think we're going to use paint. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and make my horizon line. Check that out. That was pretty simple. And I use my straight edge. If you don't have a straight edge, I use, you know, kind of a, this is secretly a ruler from the State Bank of Whittington. And in the middle of my horizon line, I'm going to put a little point. This is called a vanishing point. And you don't have to know what it's called in this case, because in this case, we're keeping it simple. This is called triangle perspective. So what I'm going to do is this little point is going to be the tip of my triangle. So again, I'm just going to make a line. I'm using my straight edge. You know, you don't have to use a straight edge. You know, you can wing it. It's up to you. So, you know, you can do it, wing it the first time, and then if you decide later, hey, I want to do it better, go ahead and do that. So here we go. Now, I have my triangle. See, I've got three sides. That makes a triangle. And um, you can see it as a triangle, or you can see it, as a river or a road that disappears into the horizon. So hopefully we're going to see it that way because again, that's why we call them triangle drawings. Now as an artist, you're going to have to decide um, what you're going to put on the sides of your river or road. So for instance, let's say this is um, a road going into a forest. 
and you want to go ahead and start. I'm, I might go ahead and draw a tree. Notice I'm back to using my pencil. Because if I make a mistake, oh boy, I'm going to have a devil of a time trying to erase it if I use marker. So now I've got a big tree on the side of my road. Now the deal is, is if this tree, whatever size you pick for the foreground, you need to make them smaller as they go into the background. So if I make another tree next to that tree, well that tree, oh boy, that's kind of a weird looking tree. I don't know about that tree. Let's just erase it a little bit. Okay, and so now I have a medium sized tree there. And then the trees are just, as they go back down that road, they're just gonna get smaller and smaller because that's what we do as artists. So um, as we try to create the illusion of space, I'm gonna make that even smaller. Now, here's the fun part. When it gets all the way back, now so far away, we, it might even just be a little silhouette of a tree. In other words, it's so small we can't even define, um, you know, I could just make a whole silhouetted forest of trees in the background. You know, we know they're trees, but, you know, we can't quite see any details to them. And that's, and that's fine. So, and then in the background, I can also add some other things. I can add, oh, I could add mountains if I wanted to. Mountains are huge, so I don't need to make them itty bitty because mountains are enormous. So, and this road could lead us to the mountains. I could add some snow caps to them. I could add the moon in the sky and make this a nighttime scene. I could add some sun and make it a daytime scene. Um, so, obviously I'm going over it in my more permanent art supply so that I can see those details. So, now I'm starting to get a scene. Now I can put some other stuff behind the trees so I can um, add more trees and make it look like a dense forest. I need, I just need to make sure that I'm sticking to the size of things. In other words, making some medium size and 